Okay. Um, I'm just making sure I got my shirt good. Uh, are you good to go? I'm good to go. All right, great. Hi, welcome, Scott. Thank you so much for being here today. I want to congratulate you on winning our Leader of the Future Award. Uh, we believe how the chief executive leads has a critical impact on success, and we're so happy to celebrate how you have led Apogee and your efforts have turned into exceptional performance and growth. Um, so great to have you. Thanks for being on. Thanks, Matt. It's great to be here. I'm very humbled and honored to be the recipient of the award. Uh, some pretty stiff competition out there in terms of your other great CEOs in the organization. And it's been a great opportunity to be part of AFM. Good. Well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about your company when we get as we get started? Sure. Apogee is a, a managed services, managed technology services organization focused on higher education. We've been around for a little over 20 years. The company was founded by a gentleman named Chuck Brady, and uh, they become the largest managed tech services business uh, in the U.S., uh, managing roughly over 400 colleges um, across the country. And, um, and Chuck decided to step away um, a couple of years ago. Um, so I'm the first CEO from outside that was come in and given the reins to uh, help the company you know, move to the next level, build off of the great foundation that existed. Um, we had a great history of um, uh, loyal customers doing a good job and, um, and employees that were, you know, that were pretty happy when I got there. So it was a pretty good setup for me to come in. Um, I, I certainly appreciate that. My, my job coming in was to make sure that uh, I think I, you know, kind of honored the, the foundation, um, the people, the customers, and then help figure out where, you know, kind of what is our ceiling? How can we, you know, kind of move, um, move the needle, move the business, of all that help make it better and, and build on what was already a great business into even better business. Right, right. Well, a perfect segue. So when we're thinking about Apogee, what do you think has been the special sauce? You guys have been very successful in this space. What do you think has allowed that to happen to this point? Well, I think it helps that we are focused on um, the single segment for the most part. I mean, we do a little bit of work outside of higher education, but you know, we really aspire to be the best in the world at what we do in this segment. And so that lets us, um, I think, you know, be particularly good at it. We've got a lot of, um, a lot of intelligent, intelligence and know-how around um, what we do and the market we do it and the certain the customers' needs and how we serve them. Um, but I also think that the, you know, the culture of really, you know, people who are part of Apogee uh, believe in a mission. They believe that, you know, by, you know, if you're going to work, uh, make a career, make a living, you know, being able to make a difference in education is not a bad, not a bad thing to, you know, to do as a consequence. So pretty much everybody that's part of Apogee, myself included, um, believes strongly in trying to blend, you know, um, a mission, a passion for a mission with you know, whatever the commercial, um, you know, benefits are with, uh, with running a business. Great. Um, I mean, what I, what's really impressive, I think you said, Hey, Apogee is a leader. We've done a lot of the things that are so important for a leader in the education space to be able to do, but you've achieved great growth on top of that since you got there. Uh, how'd you do it? And why do you think it is sustainable? Well, you know, I'm a believer in growth mindset. I think that, uh, you know, it's easy to get wrapped up in scoreboarding, you know, every goal and every outcome, you know, as a CEO and as a business running a business, you have to have, um, you know, ways of monitoring your results that goes without saying, but, you know, when you think about uh, how you go about achieving success, there, there's always a set of, you know, little steps and little uh, things that you do to get there. And so creating, um, creating the, you know, what I like, like to refer to often is the flywheel effect where you look for all the different things that you uh, probably need to do or could do to improve. And, um, and so it's never, you know, there's not one silver bullet. I mean, there are situations as sometimes in running a business or, or, or uh, you know, being asked to come in and help a business where there's a silver bullet issue, right? Um, but, you know, most times it's really about trying to figure out how to help the whole organization improve, how to, you know, get the most out of, you know, everybody's uh, input, uh, strength and collaboration, uh, look at, you know, what is the, you know, for us, it was a lot of things, you know, we're looking at a, trying to uh, improve our product portfolio or broaden the pro product portfolio so that we would have, uh, you know, 
provide greater value to our customers. We had a great reputation. Um, so why not build on that? Why not, you know, uh, serve them even more, you know, if, they, if they're willing and, and they'd like us to do more things for them. So that was, you know, sort of a natural thing to do, but it was an opportunity that uh, hadn't really been capitalized on yet. And, uh, and then looking at our, our customers and how we're, um, you know, how we're connecting with them, you know, they already had faith in us and we were doing a good job, but strengthening the communication lines, giving them a, you know, sort of a greater visibility into our, our strategy and direction. And so, uh, you know, kind of fortifying what was already, you know, like I said, a good foundation and helping us, uh, helping us improve from there. Um, and then I think the whole concept of growth mindset is really believing that you've got capacity and potential um, beyond what you are doing today, right? So, so it's, you know, we all might be doing, some of us might be doing better than others, um, but we all have a capacity to grow. I think that's the concept of being a lifelong learner, you know, first and foremost, is, you know, you never stop learning. And, uh, and so I think when you're running your business and you're trying to inject uh, this idea that, you know, we want to always do better. Um, and that translates into lots of things. It translates into customer satisfaction. It translates into um, uh, higher levels of uh, efficiency in the business. It translates into obviously, you know, revenues and growth, but it's, it's, it's all of those things. It's not just one of them. Yeah, you got to get pretty lucky if there's just one silver bullet to be able to fix a business. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think, you know, one of the things that I brought to the table in this business is, uh, you know, I have been in a lot of different businesses over the years. I've started some of my own. I've been in some bigger companies. Um, I've been in sort of a, a, a large range of uh, businesses from small to large and, and actually across multiple verticals as well. So I do have the benefit of coming in and having, um, you know, kind of touched operationally and, and from a managerial perspective, almost every side of the business, um, you know, multiple times. So I did feel pretty confident that um, I, I was a good match, you know, for the company. Uh, I told Chuck that when he uh, was interviewed. So I think actually I'm very confident I can do this job and, and give you the outcome you're looking for. And, uh, and, you know, the people have been great in receiving me and I've really enjoyed the chance to, you know, help them, um, you know, move to the next level and help the business, uh, you know, through its next evolution. Great. And I, I do like how you've emphasized the growth mindset so much within your team. Uh, how did you end up arriving at that as an important part of your leadership and management philosophy? Uh, I think, you know, it goes, you know, even as a, as a kid growing up, I was, uh, you know, I was pretty athletic. And I, you know, when you have dreams of, um, you know, grandeur and greatness, uh, you know, you have to, uh, you, you have a lot of adversity you, you run into um, if you want to, you know, reach your potential. And you have to really, you know, kind of buy into this idea that you're just incrementally improving. And so I think I've kind of carried that through my whole life. And then it translated as I became a manager and a leader over time, kind of, you know, I carried that ideal. Um, I wasn't, uh, I, I had to learn how to, um, convert that belief and those personal experiences into something that translated to the, you know, to the whole, yeah, the whole group yeah. of people, a large company. And, uh, and so I think, um, you know, over the years, I, I wouldn't say I've got it all figured out, but I, you know, I like to say we're declaring progress, not victory. And uh, I, I think, uh, I think that's part of the whole growth mindset too. You know, progress is, is, uh, is really what it's about. Um, you know, victory is, you know, can be celebrated from time to time, but, uh, you know, we, we're all in this for the long haul. And I think uh, you have to have that, that perspective. Otherwise, you know, you, you can suffer from highs and lows too. You know, you think you really right. want to have a, an attitude that, uh, you know, the business has got a long lifespan. Um, you don't have to, um, you know, rise and fall on every single, you know, obviously it's great to celebrate when great things happen. You know, we, we make a, a, you know, have a lot of fun about it too, but, um, but you can be careful that you're not, you uh, you know, so, um, you know, so uh, I don't know what the right word is there, but uh, you might probably have to cut this section, Matt. <laughs> don't worry about it. Yeah. All good. Um, well, and, and Scott, you're more than a little modest about being an elite rower in the past. And I think that that sport is just all about grinding, like the incremental improvement. I'm sure that that didn't play a small part in you understanding, hey, the little bits, all those things matter. Yeah, you know, uh, my rowing experience, you know, personally was uh, one of the really important foundational things I, I did as a, you know, as a person growing up. 
it was a little bit of my military experience and I was not the same thing, but um, some of the discipline and some of the teamwork and some of the um, uh, sort of commitment to, you know, incremental improvements, um, you know, it's tough when you're, uh, as soon as you start to get into world-class levels and, you know, you're looking at milliseconds of improvement and um, trying to um, embrace that as a success, as a win, you know, it doesn't feel right. like much when it doesn't feel like much, right. When you're, when you're, uh, you know, kind of in the, in the boat. Um, but I had the benefit of, um, you know, teaming and, and uh, rowing with and, and meeting over the years, people who were really, truly best in the world, you know, worked with a lot of, uh, rode with a lot of people who became gold medalists. Um, right. And, uh, um, and over the years have uh, always really uh, enjoyed understanding what makes people who are really best in the world, you know, kind of tick. Uh, and what is it about what they're doing that, you know, I could borrow or we could borrow. Um, so that is definitely part of uh, my philosophy is, you know, if you want to be best in the world, at what you do, you know, try to figure out, you know, um, who else is best in the world at what they do and, uh, and try to incorporate that into, into what, you know, kind of how you operate. Yeah. And I, I think you're spot on. And uh, I'm just one more thing on the rowing thing, because I'm so impressed with athletes um, that do crew. Uh, the synchronicity is so important around what you're doing. So it's not just about you getting better as an individual, but that level of synchronicity that you can get with uh, the folks who are in your boat. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how you've thought about achieving that synchronicity and maybe how that links up with your management philosophy as well? You know, um, yeah, you're right about rowing. I mean, there's a saying when you're rowing, uh, especially an eight, an eight person boat, um, they should only hear one sound, right? Because if all eight, uh, oars hit the water at the same time it's only one sound right and that's what you're aiming for uh, and they should actually leave at the same time too so you want them in at the same time and out at the same time that takes a lot of practice takes a lot of commitment to each other uh, it takes a lot of really um you know kind of being in sync with your your teammates and so you know i believe um i believe when you're running a business uh, my, my team would tell you i think that i'm i, I push pretty hard for cross-functional um uh, cooperation and collaboration um, so there's this sort of balance between um, accountability. Uh, you know, you want to hold people accountable. I will, even hope that they're going to hold their, their teams and their people accountable. But you also want to recognize that, you know, businesses aren't by nature departmental silos. They're, they're, they're integrated, right? So even though you got leaders that sit in different roles and departments that perform different functions, they overlap. And so, you know, trying to cultivate and, uh, and create and endorse a culture that, you um, that the leadership is feel safe and uh, and willing to uh, kind of recognize each other's um, dependencies and uh, and to uh, you know sort of see themselves as the collective contributor to the business success as opposed to you know seeing their own department or their own particular contribution as being you know kind of the critical the critical factor. If you really want to get to the next level, be best in the world, you really do have to figure out how to kind of create that chemistry and that harmony and. Uh, and, and get the most out of your cross-functional opportunities. Great. Uh, so Scott, what do you enjoy about your job? Well, I love my, I love the team. I love my people. Um, I love the, I love working with the customers. I have a passion for higher education, for education in general. I've, uh, I've been in, you know, in public sector uh, leadership for a number of years uh, on the commercial side, but I do, um, I really do love this <clears throat> idea that, you know, we're making a difference. Um, we are, uh, you know, it's it's reinforced by uh, customer feedback. You know, our our EMPS scores are terrific. You know, we have a 98% customer sat uh, rating. <clears throat> we have a 96% uh, likely to renew rating, and we have a 71% <clears throat> EMPS score. And if you follow EMPS, what that means is of that 98% that are satisfied, 71% of them uh, will go tell their friends to you know to recommend us to a friend. So you know it's pretty good um, that 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 those are all things that we've introduced in the last year or so. Those kind of ratings and that kind of measure to see how we're doing and we're you know kind of how we can improve. Um, but I you know really um, we've got a great uh, a great business, a great group of people that uh, do great work. Um, and we love serving higher education and we love the the fact that we're able to um, you know do it. In a, we have long-term contracts in general, so it's a big decision for a customer to commit to Apogee. Uh, they typically are five-year agreements, and so um, you know, in public sector, that's not that doesn't happen very often where they'll work with a you know an outside vendor for that long. So we have to do a great job 
And, uh, and so it's a challenge, but it's a great challenge to have. And it's a great honor to have to, <clears throat> the opportunity to serve them and then to help uh, American education. You know, education is the foundation of our countries and our democracy. And I think that if, you, uh, if you're impacting education, helping making, making it better, you're, you know, indirectly, you're making society better. At least that's what we believe, we hope. And, uh, and so it's important our work, you know, education, higher education in particular, is under some duress. Uh, there's a, you know, prediction that uh, over time, there'll be, you know, a smaller population base of students. And so um, we believe that one of the things that makes us different and valuable is that, you know, we do what we do. You know, we aim to be the best at what we do. And, uh, and it's not we're, not, we're not teaching and we're not doing research. Those are the two primary functions of higher education today. But what we do in terms of the roles we can support colleges with is take on um, responsibilities in areas that maybe aren't what they do best. And so we think it's a great time for us to help education uh, be better at what they do, be more competitive, and to serve the, uh, you know, to serve the society, you know, the American public anyway, uh, to a higher degree. And, uh, you know, if we, if they do that and we contribute to it, that's awesome. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's so nice to hear that you have a mission that you can grab onto uh, so strongly. And it is a great way to make sure that your team feels like they understand that they're making a bigger difference in the world. Yeah, it is that way. We growth mindset, something that you've mentioned a few times, how did you uh, initiate that growth mindset within your team and make it feel like that was something that they really wanted to have as part of their identity within Apogee? Well, you know, um, I thought it was important. I mean, everybody, I think most people have it in them, right? They just sometimes they haven't, it needs to get sort of, uh, um, you know, sponsored or, um, or instigated, you know, kind of so that they can, they can kind of um, become more supported and, and functioning that way. You know, when I asked my team about, you know, how I'm doing with them, uh, you know, they, you know, they say, well, you know, one of the things they appreciate is that uh, they see me as a change agent, and I definitely push their boundaries. But they see that it is, uh, you know, done respectfully and done in a way that it's, it's actually helping the business. And they, they, they've, I've, Heard, you know, some of them have told me that, you know, uh, they appreciate that we're creating change without chaos, yeah, um, you know, so, so, so that's nice. Um, and that, you know, obviously, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm <laughs> trying to, you know, you're trying to push the, push the limit of, of our ability to, to grow without pushing us over the edge, without being unreasonable. I think, you know, being reasonable as a leader is really important. Um, if you're reasonable and you're fair, I think you can get a lot of, um, you, you know, you're, you can build a lot of uh, support and uh, you know, sort of collective equity across your organization to uh, to serve, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's very apparent the engagement that they feel, and uh, I think by virtue of the respect that you offer around it, uh, that gives them more comfort in terms of where they can start to put their best foot forward. Yeah, they need to be uh, secure in taking risks uh, and recognize that uh, you know I'm, we're looking for change, we're looking for growth. Um, it's not always going to come or there's periodically going to be mistakes that are made. Uh, and uh, you have to take some of that with, uh, you know, with the, with the other side of it, which is you're going to get, you know, have successes and have growth. And um, so it can't always be a, you know, Pollyanna, you know, kind of a situation, but, um, but we work hard to, you know, um, embrace the, embrace the, uh, you know, that concept and to make sure that, you know, we're not, you know, overreacting when we, you know, have some sort of a disappointment uh, or some sort of a challenge that we didn't foresee in our in our commitment to that progress. Um, yeah, as you're thinking about your business going forward, looking in the future on the horizon, what uh, what idea related to your business has you excited going into the rest of 2023 and beyond? You know, I you know I think we've just gotten going to be honest, which is okay. interesting. You know, so we're we're um, the largest in the country in what we do. But I think we're just scratching the surface. Um, and when I got here, I thought about, okay, is what other verticals should we potentially go serve? And then as I got inside of our business and learned more and saw, you know, who we were serving and, and what we were doing, it became apparent to me that we had a lot of work, a lot of opportunity, a lot of work still to do here, you know, within higher education specifically. So um, I think we um, we have enormously more potential in terms of not only what we can do for higher education, but I think in terms of the number of higher higher education institutions we can serve. And I think in terms of the way the organization can evolve, we have um, the skill sets and the, um, 
the capabilities we provide, the services we, you know, we provide, they truly have horizontal uh, relevance. So I have no question in my mind that at some point in the future, if and when we want to move uh, into other vertical markets, you know, I think we can pretty easily. Um, but uh, I think the responsible thing for us to do right now, given we have so much potential, is to just, you know, continue to make sure we're ab absolutely maximizing, you know, our potential here in this segment and, and um, continue to do a great job of building on that foundation. Great. Well, I asked you to look way out on the horizon. Now I'm going to ask you to look pretty narrowly. So a week that just ended, it's Friday today when you're thinking uh, this weekend um, over, you know, what would make you feel like this past week was a success? What are the types of things that make you feel like, hey, this week was helping us get to where we're trying to go? You know, I had a lot of great engagements this week with my leadership team, collectively, individually. We dug into a number of, you know, different things that we want to, areas we want to improve in. Um, so that was a real high for me this week. Uh, I think, um, you know, at the end of the day, my work as a leader is always through, you know, the people and, uh, you know, whether I'm working with them individually or sort of tangentially, uh, you know, kind of watching, uh, watching, you know, what they're doing, helping, you know, encourage them, helping, you know, um, redirect to certain priorities that might, uh, might, might occur, you know, all those things happened this week, you know, we, we were, we're, you know, in the middle of pursuing a, you know, a number of very large opportunities right now. That's exciting. You know, the, the team is, is doing great. Our pipeline has never been stronger uh, as a business. So, I mean, there's a ton of things for us to be incredibly excited about. We've, uh, we've implemented, you know, we've done massive investments in our support structure for our customers uh, in the last year. Um, that's all gone really well. You know, those are hard, right? Making that's part of the whole change agenda is, uh, hey, we want to not only support our customers better, but we want to be able to support more of our customers. So we've got to improve our scalability. So we've done that. We put all the foundational stuff in place for that. So, you know, I just sort of think my week, I, I look at my weeks generally as I'm, um, you know, I'm focused on um, trying to impact the organization across a lot of different areas, a lot of different dimensions. We do have a set of strategic priorities like most businesses. So I spend time every week on those with my team, but um, you know I try to work hard to stay close to the you know to the, the pulse and the culture and the people of the organization too, and uh, kind of keep it real. Great, great. Uh, so you mentioned that you always want to be learning. What are some of the ways that you make sure that you're continuing to learn? What are some of the things that you're paying attention to? You know. Um, it's a pretty broad range of things that I'm uh, focused on learning. Uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm pretty knowledgeable about the sector, but there's always more things to learn. You know, uh, I, I, uh, uh, I'm always investigating, you know, the new technologies related to our, uh, our, the business that we're, you know, the customers we're serving and the business, the nature of our business. Um, you know, when I got into this uh, business. I my my background was more related to the application stack and uh, application development, um, and cloud and those kinds of things inside of education. This was uh, the core business here was more focused around network services. So kind of bringing some of those things together, but it's you know also given me an opportunity to you know dig deeper into learning more about networks and how they run and and um, you know as you think about the world of um, AI and IoT you know that relates to that you know all that stuff hangs off the network. So, you know, I'm in, you know, hurry up mode in terms of learning. Um, how does our strategy need to evolve so we can serve our customers um, in the way that they're going to want to be served or need to be served, um, you know, as the, as the provider of services we provide today. So, you know, trying to, um, I'm not the, I'm not the, I'm not Steve Jobs. I'm not the lead technologist in the company, but I do need to be, uh, commit myself to be uh, informed, knowledgeable enough, able to navigate through, uh, you know, those conversations with uh, people in my team that are smarter than me um, to help us kind of figure out what's the right, you know, what's the kind of right pathway for us to, uh, to evolve and improve the business. Right. Well, the one constant is change, right? And so uh, it sounds like you're getting ready on all fronts around that. Yeah, we, we, we're always, uh, you know, we're, I mean, we're always looking to embrace change and, and grow. Good deal. Uh, so one last question for you. So when with AFN, you know, we really believe that the diversity and experience expertise and perspective is where you, our members get a lot of value. You're a tremendous value within our hubs, being able to share a lot of the things that you think about your management philosophy, how that brings forward. What uh, about AFN has been valuable to you on your journey as Apogee CEO? A lot of things, Matt. It's been uh, it's been terrific. Um, you know, first of all, CEO can be a lonely role. 
um, you know, you you work with everybody, but you know, sometimes you can have to kind of um, you know park some of your own um, your own sort of uh, concerns or or questions or um, you know whatever things that might be uh, not appropriate for you to to uh, think a lot about. And uh, so it's nice to have a chance to kind of pull back and 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 join a cohort of people that hear hear them kind of talk about what they're working on. You know, we keep obviously we manage confidentialities. We're not going we don't breach those amongst our respective responsibilities, but. But it is a different kind of a forum to, uh, to have um, people that, you know, they're not in the same sector or doing the same business as me, but at a certain level, they're trying to do the same thing. You know, they're trying to build and run a, a business effectively. They're trying to connect with their people. They're trying to connect with their customers. They're, they're thinking about scale. They're thinking about access to capital. They're thinking about competition. They're thinking about all these different things that, you know, some are, some are good and some are threats, you know, or some are opportunities and some are threats. And, uh, and so uh, that's, that's terrific just to hear, you know, different perspectives, um, you know, from in different lines of business and different parts of the world, uh, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, their, their challenges and, uh, and then, um, you know, and sometimes commiserating in, in our respective, uh, uh, you know, challenges, sometimes, uh, you know, coming up with great ideas around, uh, you know, problems that, you know, maybe we hadn't, uh, we wouldn't have come up with that idea, you know, if we, if we didn't have the benefit of a broad perspective of, uh, you know, experiences and, and knowledge. And the other thing I'll say is, you know, that AFN I've enjoyed is I, I take advantage of sometimes of the uh, professional development sessions that you, you put on, not all of them, you know, some of them, um, it, sometimes it's just a time management thing. And sometimes it, you know, there's certain ones that are more relevant for me and I'm sure for others, but, um, but there's enough of them and there's enough high quality um, content that, um, you know, because of the nature of the speakers you've brought on, that has been beneficial and I certainly enjoy uh, the opportunity to, to take advantage of that too. Great. Well, uh, really appreciate all the kind words about AFN and Scott, thank you for being a great member as well as congratulations on winning the Leader of the Future Award. Really a great reflection of what you've been doing. Thanks so much, Matt. As I said, it's, a, it's an honor and I'm humbled. I, I, you know, probably not worthy, but I'll take it. I appreciate it. Excellent. <laughs> appreciate the recognition. Thanks, Thank Scott. You. Yeah, thank you.